sort of. What? <coughs> really? I could be louder. Should we turn it up? Kind of professional. Yeah. You can't sit next to Joe anymore. Because he translates. <laughs> he's saying he's being good, and he just like, it's like, did he give you a dollar to give me shit or what? Five. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for five bucks, give me shit. That's cool. Shiny. Anyways. We'll edit this out, Sean. <laughs> He's got church giggles now. Oh my gosh. Anyways, we're going to start, like, for real now. I told you it would give you a bit of a horror show, right? I know it is. Anyways, hi everybody. I'm Treble. This is Mike Connie, and thank you so much. It was absolutely phenomenal this morning. Absolutely love the music. Had a great time. Thank you so much for moving up a week because we lost the, the people who were supposed to be playing today, so we truly appreciate that. But anyways, more about you. Introduce yourselves. Tell us how you got into like playing and singing and all that other fun stuff. Well, I've, uh, I've always been a singer. Um, my family was very musical. My mother was a great singer. Great piano player. So, from the time I was little, I always sang. I took piano lessons and played the trumpet and sang in the choir. Then as I got into high school, I started taking classical voice. Continued that through college. And continued to play out marching bands and concert bands and jazz bands and stuff and trumpet. And then, uh, um, so I studied classical voice for, for a really long time, about 10 years. And sang a little opera here and there. It never really, I mean, I liked the music, but it, it was really demanding, and so I think I, you know, it was tough to keep up with. And I we moved to Minneapolis and um, met a bunch of musicians there, and they taught me how to play guitar. So I started playing guitar, and I had been writing songs on piano a little bit, but it was really when I started playing guitar that, the, that I just really started to fall in love with song. Writing. And it was a much faster vehicle for finishing songs and started playing in bands up there and um, moved down to Tucson about 19 years ago and just never stopped and, and played with other people here and there. And when I first moved out here, there was actually really a pretty lively folk scene. I mean, there was a folk there with a social club which had a folk music night. And, um, it's kind of a really rich environment. There were songwriting circles, there was a lot of stuff going on that you could sort of get involved with, with people that were doing stuff just like I was doing, the singer-songwriter thing. And, um, and I just, you know, I've always really had a desire to write songs, and it felt like I had something to say, I guess, to some extent. Oh, that sounds kind of arrogant, but at the same time, um, I felt really compelled just work at the craft, and, and now it's it's uh, it's probably easier to write a song now, but it's it's uh, inspiration for the so you're you spend a lot more time sort of crafting, and, and so I've been you know I've been looking for places to play, always looking for places to play, and as a solo acoustic singer songwriter, it's two songs a tough town for that. So. You know, I've been doing this, doing this thing down at Brew Coffee Shop downtown. They're just getting started. There's construction everywhere. It's really hard to get around. Um, and so I thought, well, they don't have anything going on um, except for my friend Bob who does his music thing, Bobby Ronstadt. I know him from years ago from playing up with Blue Jewel Music Night. And so they're doing their thing down there on the second Saturday. And so I talked with with Kate and Phil down there, and they're like, why don't you bring the Broadway Saturday to that, and we'll see how it goes. And it's been hit and miss, and so, um, I don't know, but I'm just you know, really pleased to be here today, and to get, 
you know, meet by you and get some exposure and you know, see a new venue and, and the same with people. It's great. Well, we definitely do appreciate it. And I know that we've got quite a few people tuned in, so we know probably some of your family that's out of town. So it's like, hi, everybody. You know, you can be like, did you watch me? You can totally bust them. You can, you know, call out certain people and do that, too. Um, we definitely appreciate it, though, because, uh, you know, I, the scene has changed even the little time I've been in it. You know, you've got certain people like Randy from Top Dead Center, who we absolutely love, who comes here a lot, and who usually watches, and if you are watching, hi, Randy, we absolutely love you. Um, you know, but the, the folk music scene, I mean, there's so much diversity here, but it doesn't seem like anybody really, it, it's kind of like a every man for himself sort of thing right now, which is one of the reasons I do this show. It's like, okay, let's try to get people out here and, you know, have a good time in the mornings and see how much talent Tucson really has. Um, speaking about playing, uh, how can people hear your music? I know you've got a web page and stuff like that. Give us the information on that, where people can go, hear your music, get in touch with you if they, you know, for any upcoming gigs or anything you've got going on and stuff like that. Or if there's any people smart enough to want to have him play for them, how to get in touch with you to do that as well. Right, so I have a web page. It's mikekine.com. It's K A N N E dot com and uh, that has my all my scheduling and uh, contact information is there um, right now my only listening presence is that there's some YouTube videos of me sitting in my living room my friend Thomas recorded several years ago and um, you know I'm, I'm sort of working in the studio but I've really spread myself a bit thin and so I've been working on a studio project with a good friend of mine Steve Centauri, I'm doing kind of a, a really heavy project, which is really, really different for me. It's very heavy. And then I've been singing uh, in the studio with a cover band. And I think we're going to, I think we sort of, as, as three of the four of us are like supreme perfectionists. And so I think we're going to try now to get out and to work. But it took us a long time to sort of feel like, hey, we're, we've got it going on, you know. I, I sort of have to know stuff back and forth. What? I'll be, I'll be at Brood on the 6th, yeah, I think 6 o'clock to 9 o'clock, I think. So that, that, will, that will be my next gig next Saturday. And uh, I have no idea what it's going to be like downtown next Saturday because it's club crawl, so it's probably going to be. So we'll see, you know, but um, I'm having a great time. Um, it's really cool that there's a lot of people out there. In my head, there's always a lot of people being from me, so. Anyway. That's it, and you will have more YouTube videos because I do take copies of the whole show and I do post it on YouTube on my page, which is Trouble in AZ1 because I screwed up the first one and had to do a whole new one. I'm, I'm technically, you know, it just doesn't work. Computers hate me. I had everything set, I put everything up there, and it went away. So, but those will be on there, and I will post them on your lovely wife's page because, as you told me earlier, she's the Facebook person I use. So, I will post them there, I will post them on my page, and we will have more YouTube videos. So, if people want to check it out, it will be as soon as we record it, it's live and available on Ustream. But it will be on the Trouble and Easy One page on YouTube. Um, Depending on how my weekend goes, I try to get it up on Sundays. Sometimes when I'm working Monday morning, as long as my employer isn't looking, I just spend Monday uploading them. <laughs> kind of, yeah, hi. Um, so, and the sixth, you definitely want to go down, club crawl, check him out at Brew. Another thing you definitely want to do is come to the River's Edge. They always have really cool stuff going and they put up with my shit every Saturday morning. For that alone, we've got to, I mean, right? It's, you know, I mean, usually I have to pay people for that crap. And they have a lot of really fun stuff going on. They have karaoke Sunday through, I think, Thursday. And on the second and fourth to Thursday of every month, they have beer pong, which is always fun. 
you gotta love beer pong. But if you stick around long enough while you're playing beer pong and you can kind of cheerful, at midnight the girls hit the poles. So uh, yeah, that's always fun. They have the bikini contest the third Wednesday of every month. They have the sexy buck contest. I don't know, Amber, she's not even gonna pay attention to me. But I think that's the last Friday of every month. They have wet t-shirt contests. They have all, all kinds of really good shit happening here. So you definitely want to come down. Every Friday night, they have country night. Every Saturday night, they have rock night. Um, their karaoke, if you come down and do karaoke, you can win a trip to Vegas. There's always really, really, really cool things going on. So you definitely want to come out, check out the River's Edge. You also want to go to M-I-K-E-K-A-N-N-E.com. Check out Mike's music. You can take the videos that we post off YouTube and put them on your webpage as well. I can make them available for you. And you can check that out so you can always see where he's going to be playing, where he's going to be next, and listen to some of his great music. Anything else you want to add? No, I'm ready to go. I told you it wouldn't be that bad, really. So we're going to give him a second to maybe collect himself and get him back up on stage. Thanks so much for joining us, and see you next week. And listen to Mike again. Hit the button, Joe.